Hi, gorgeous souls. Give me just a second, because I did kind of tell everybody I was getting ready to make a video. Or I put it out there. And before I get into the video, I want to see if I can find it here on my other phone so I can post it to my groups real fast. And then I'll jump on what this week's healing messages is. I'm having trouble because i got spirit coming in. Ah, I know why. Hold on just a second. I'm supposed to have a spirit guide here with me in the form of a crystal. i got to run and go get it. I'll be right back. I was hearing a yell for me. Meet my little skull. Hi, Sandy. This is my divine understanding skull. So, when I start talking, I need to put that back in my hand. But I want to try to put it out to some of my groups. As soon as I figure out how to get to it with this phone, because I don't use this phone no more. And I just can't do it while I'm making the video on that one. So, let me see real fast. So, I want to be, have it out there and be done with it. Yeah, alrighty. Let me share to my page. And share to my group. I'm only going to share to two groups and then I'm going to get right back here into the video. Share to my group mm -mm -mm. and then I'll go back through later and put it out for everybody else. Because sorry, hair in my mouth. Spirit was very <laughs> adamant about, I'm not playing with you, get this out now. Stop and do it now. So <laughs> I made a couple notes of what I'm getting from spirit and then my little divine balance here is to help make sure I'm hearing it because she tends to call herself <laughs> guns and roses <laughs> so she's very balanced but honest and upfront and won't let you get away with ignoring your shit so to speak is what I get from her Okay, this is for June 2nd through the 12th. We are coming into the next solar eclipse. And this powerful energy is just starting to super come into its power play. All right? Now, the thing is, I'm, I'm, the eclipse is on the 10th. And I'm going to go over everything. But I'm going to give you what Spirit's given me right up front. This is an energy of resurrection if you are doing this right. And what a powerful golden seal of resurrection this can be for you. What they are giving me, though, I think I always think it's funny the way spirit works because uh, I think it's funny, but it's really, it's me that's funny because uh, the, they're going to give me what I need in order to be able to make sure I comprehend it and give it out correctly. So... They're going through my library and going, yeah, let me find what twisted way of working this out. I can make sure she comprehends. What they are giving me is a, it's, it's a rather, not a super old movie, but it's an old movie. Um, it's Van Helsing. And in Van Helsing, at some point, um, is the one where they have the three queens and they're trying to make vampire babies. And anyway, in the movie, there's a masquerade ball. And the girl who um, he's captured at the point is um, Dracula is dancing with her in front of a ball. 
like like in front of like they're in a whole giant ball for the day and he's dancing with her and as they're dancing she's getting lost in the energy she's getting swept up in it when she notices she's seeing herself in the mirror and in truth she's the only one there dancing but what they're showing me is peacock masks is on her now this is where this all comes into play do you not get swept up in the energy do not get distracted in the illusion between now and when you make it through this week, just through this whole week, because there is definitely an underlining illusion trying to distract you and pull you in a false fantasy away from your truth, okay? And it is there, but it's there to see if you're ready to ascend, to see if you're ready to pass the test, okay? This is why there's a peacock mask. This is why there's the ball. This is why she's getting caught up in it, but she sees herself in the mirror and she's the only one dancing. The whole ball is an illusion. Peacocks speak to you about resurrection. Peacocks speak to us about balance and beauty. See, this is where it becomes a little funky because you have to have ascended on that spiritual level high enough within yourself and that spiritual level never ends you're constantly growing okay but you have to be at a point where even the ill you can find beauty in it because there is always light and dark there cannot be light without dark so therefore it is necessary i'm also being given a spider at this moment which is saying pay attention to the way the web you were weaving and pay attention to <laughs> okay, thank you for reminding me. That's why they use the spider then. Um, pay attention, not just to the web that you are weaving, but to your past, your now, and your future. Because what they are reminding me is, we only have now. Now is all that matters. But more importantly, what everybody mistaken is now is really all you ever have had. Yes, there's past lives. Yes, there's past situations. But now is the only thing that matters because it's what creates the future. And it's what you have now. It's all that you ever really do have. Going back to Peacock. It is balance and beauty. It is being able to see through the illusion and define it to the bigger picture. Okay? Okay? But it also has many eyes, the peacock's feathers do. So it is reminding you, stay in your focus, stay in your clarity, stay grounded, and stay in your awareness. Okay? Because the peacock has many eyes in its beautiful fan of feathers. So it's not just one eye. It's seeing all things from all directions and keeping your awareness grounded. Um, they're also giving me, um, <laughs> like I said, I think it's funny because it's the way that they work with the way my mind works. I'm getting a whole lot of the freaks come out at night energy. That has to do with that illusion and the distraction. But that's not all bad. Because sometimes we are the freaks according to the ones who are not awake. And this is all about manifestation and where you take it. The power right now is all in your thinking and your acting. Because even if you aren't speaking it, it's your thinking and your actions. But right now, you need to learn to speak up. Because I'm also being given the frog medicine, which goes with that peacock and the owl medicine. And it tells you to speak up and be heard. It tells you to figure out what is right from what is wrong. It helps you to understand how to navigate your path or your direction. It also speaks to us about spiritual transformation, rebirth, wisdom, metamorphosis. You are in very mutatable energy. This energy is all about mutating and what will it turn and change into. And that has everything to do with your communication right now. 
And where are you taking the power of your magic within that communication to the outer world as well as to yourself? Mercury is in retrograde. <clears throat> I'm also getting the owl. Sorry, my phone keeps trying to ring and I'm trying to tell it to shut up. Okay. I'm also getting the owl, which speaks to me of death, but it's not death like as in something's going to die. It reminds me of the death card, meaning like the end of the end of a cycle. It can be the end of a cycle. It is about resurrection and rebirthing. But this is all about trusting your intuition, staying on the point, staying on point, staying focused and staying clear so that you are in your awareness. Trust your intuition. But Al also warns you that not everybody is out for your best interests. And some people do have a bad agenda with you in line because it will work out for their best interests not thinking of you so this is why it takes us right back to the frog because I'm gonna frog like nobody's business of telling you to speak up and be heard no right from wrong navigate your path or your situation and understand that spiritual transformation frog is I think of three different elements not four and most shamans and when I will say of two but I feel like it is three because it is of earth of water but it is of air it does jump so we are talking about the mutatable energy of the shifting and the change now with that being said I'm sorry I'm like asking them can you please let me slow down just a little bit because I'm getting dry mouth okay you have mercury which is in retrograde again mutatable energy words mind thinking all very incredibly powerful manifestation powerful more than you realize especially i was just told on the day of the eclipse the day before and the day after that is a new moon so it's the dark moon working through the new moon for new directions all right don't forget you have pluto which is in retrograde saturn your rules your walls your boundaries restrictions, what you can and can't do is still in retrograde or it's just went in retrograde. Venus is moving into Cancer on the second, which is tomorrow. Cancer is the universal fourth house. And I know that you all have your own special charts, but from a universal level, it will still hit in some form in that energy. The Cancer energy of the universal fourth house is your inner utmost inner security. You have to realize that the power is in you and it always has been. But do you feel it? Do you believe in it? Do you know it? Can you touch it? Can you be it? Venus is sensitivity. Venus is going to tell you where it hurts and why the hell it hurts. She is not love. I don't care how many other astrologers put it that way. She teaches you about... Hi, baby. I keep breaking the conversation that I have going on with spirit. I'll get lost. So I'm not trying to be rude. Okay, but Venus is not love. She can tell you how to caress the communication to make it work for you. But she is your sensitivity. I always say when you put your hand in an oven cooking at 350 degrees and you try to grab that pan of cookies without a oven mitt, you're going to burn the crap out of your hand. And when you get burned, that's Venus going, don't fucking do that. Because she's telling you that hurt you. She teaches you how to know what to love. And why to love it. And why it's good for you. And she also teaches you what hurts you. Why it hurts you. And why you don't want to do it again. So you learn right from wrong. Cancer, again, that universal fourth house. It's the home. But you have to remember the home is here. The only thing that can never be taken away from you is your inner soul. Unless you've misplaced it, you've lost it, you've walked too far away from it, and it's time to grab that power and reclaim it. Call energies all back to you that are yours, but call your positive energies back to you, or your balancing truth back to you. But Venus in Cancer is going to be getting into your inner emotional security and telling you where you are harming yourself and where... You need to make those corrections versus where you've done good and you need to continue to stay, wow, in that portal of direction is what I just heard. Okay. 
you have the eclipse again on the 10th in Gemini. Mutatable energy, new moon, coming through the dark moon into the new moon, new beginnings, new directions, starting something new. Resurrection, rebirth, if you are doing this right, if you do not allow yourself to get distracted in the illusion. The very next day on the 11th is an incredibly powerful day. Mars is moving into Leo. The creativity, Leo is also the ruler. Leo also reminds you, you have to be your own king or queen. And if you don't like the life that you are living or the kingdom you have created, will be a better ruler. Learn how to create it in a way that helps define you into who you truly are, not who the illusion has allowed you to become through your own inner emotional securities of where you've gotten lost. You have, like I said, Mars, your power, your warrior, your aggression, all moving into Leo the day after that eclipse. Jupiter and Neptune are slowing down along with Cirrus. They don't go retrograde until later on in the month, but they are slowing down. This is why I'm getting the freaks come out at night, because all of this energy is slowing down. It's like a standstill. It's like, it's not moving. It's like a clock that's gotten jammed. And Jupiter and Neptune is your universal 12th house. The 12th house are the secrets that you keep, the skeletons in the closet, your lack of healing, that inner emotional security, your shame, blame. You know, like I said, all of your inner emotional security that has not been healed, we're in denial of it. The skeletons in the closet, your shame, your blame, all of that. It's where you point the fingers at everybody but yourself. Jupiter is the abundance. Neptune is magic. And it's speaking to you of going, are you listening? So some of the freaks that are coming out at night are you marrying yourself. Just like I said in the beginning, they're giving me Van Helsing in the, in the, the uh, masquerade dancing. The moon is going through Pisces. Pretty much right now we're going to be going into Pisces energy. And then as we come into the weekend, before we grow into the week of the eclipse, we'll be going into Aries. Pisces, moon. Let me remind you right off the bat. That means you want to believe the best in people. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to believe the best in people. But sometimes you need to see the illusion. Sometimes you need to see the truth. Sometimes you want to hope people are better than they are, but they are not. Pisces will bring home the stray dog... And sometimes the stray dog is the bad people. And I don't want to say bad people. I want to say lower dimensional people that will actually take you away from where you're supposed to be going. Again, distraction and illusion. Hi, honeys. And this is very important to you right now to realize this. You're going through this energy of wanting to hope and believe. But then we're going to jump into Aries energy as we go in through the weekend. Aries energy is fire, explosive, masculine. It is word vomit. Again, manifestation of what you speak. And you may be speaking faster than you can actually operate yourself. <laughs> but once it's out, you can't take it back. This is all talking to you about being grounded, focused, clarity. Do not lose your emotions. Gemini energy is what we're mutatable energy moving into Jekyll and Hyde and spirit always reminds me that the thing with Gemini is typically it's all emotion or it's all logic and you need to find a balance there it can't be all emotion and it can't be all logic there has to be soul and you need to be able to slow down to connect and find the soul answer Mars, okay, hold on, I'm going to turn this page a second. You have very powerful energy. Cirrus and Uranus are conjuncting all of this time. Cirrus is too close to home energy. Cirrus is karmic energy. She is the threefold, sitting on top of Uranus and Taurus. This is speaking to us of our independence, our individuality, our uniqueness, our freedom, our ability to have free will. Our ability not to be caged or pushed around or become the sheep. 
your creativity, your security within who and what you are. But Cirrus is also speaking to you about the threefold. And she hits under the belt. Okay? This is a very powerful energy. But the thing is, we have to also realize Neptune and Pallas are in conjunct energy, which is also Athena, the warrior and the owl. This also speaks to us in that 12th house of grief, sorrow, shame, blame, insecurity, pointing the fingers, the skeletons in the closet, the denial, not wanting to see the mirrors, not wanting to see the truth. Where will you take that energy? This is seeing the peacock, seeing the resurrection, seeing the balance, the beauty, and the threefold of it coming into truth, of coming into your power. But not getting distracted by the masquerade ball. Because if you get distracted by the masquerade ball, you fail. Period. You fail. Go to the back of the line. Start all over again because you have not learned how to ascend. Okay? We are talking about it not getting along with the sun as we come into this eclipse, or Mercury. The communication of how to communicate. Keeping that focus and that clarity. Action, aggression, masculine energy, and acceleration. So this is going, you don't just, you don't have like just the eclipse building. You have, new cycle begins now. The very next day. And as we're coming through this energy. Because, like I said, Mars is in opposition, but Mars will be coming from Cancer into Leo. Inner emotional security of wanting to feel good, but into, now I'm ready to take action, because I'm back in a fire sign. Mars is your inner SWAT team. It is your inner SWAT team, and it is your inner warrior. It's going from, I don't know, I just want to be loved, I want to be accepted, and I want us all to get along, and I'm trying to work, but I can't seem to get my power going to, boom, I'm in power, and I'm ready now. Right fucking now. Okay? That's how Mars is going to take his action. And it's in opposition of Pluto. Pluto. Which is finding the true spirit and not getting lost in the distraction. Like I said, the distraction and the masquerade ball is there. Will you take off the peacock mask or will you use it? See, there's two ways here. Or will you use it and keep those eyes on to see from all directions? This is all about awareness and communication. On the 5th, as we build up to this eclipse... The Mars is in op opposition with Pluto, but it's also going to cause a T-square with Aries energy on the 5th. Which is going to cause a major Jekyll Hyde, a major, um, where do you want me to go with that? A major Jekyll Hyde ego imbalance. It has the power to stand in its power, to stand in its beginning of, ooh, it's time to start this cycle so that I'm getting in the right direction come this eclipse because I'm starting to truly know and see and feel myself and come back into soul. But it also has the ability to open your mouth and completely throw yourself in the wrong direction. So this is about communication again, but knowing. Knowing, don't get lost in your emotions. Like I said... My Divine Balance Gulf here says that you need to know how to see the beauty in all things. Even when it's dark, because it has its reason for being dark. The North Node, which is everything you need to learn in order to move forward, which is in that mutatable energy, in Aquarius, with the Sun, making it all illuminating, bringing everything out by the 10th, and then going into direct, let's move forward. The day after when Mars moves in to Leo, that energy of the North Node and the Sun is getting along wonderfully with Saturn. Wonderfully with your inner communication of what you need to change. Where the rules, the walls, the boundaries, and the restrictions are going yeah, that's just not working for me anymore and it's time to change that. I was being told Yesterday by spirit, what you covet may be shifting. And it may be because it needs to. 
trust your intuition here. Lilith and Taurus is also getting along with Saturn. Lilith, in this case, is working to help you find your power. Help you stand in that independence. Help you stand in your strength. Lilith reminds you, you don't burn for anybody else. Your soul flame, your soul burning isn't for anybody else. It's for you and you alone. Stepping into Uranus, your independence, your individuality, your uniqueness, freedom, how you create and manifest your money, your life, law of attraction. This is asking you to reclaim your deemable independence, integrity. Stand up and be heard. Don't allow people to push you around anymore and do not allow the rules, the walls, and the boundaries of other people's agenda to work for you when it doesn't. It's okay to say no. Action, aggression, acceleration. Peacock energy, resurrection, balance. But all of this has to do with Awareness of your own emotions. Awareness of being able to keep track of your mouth and your word vomit versus your emotions and your thinking. Jekyll and Hyde within yourself. And then, where is it that you were trying to direct yourself? Stay clear. Do not become distracted. Because otherwise, you have to go back to the end of the line and learn the test again. This is time of rebirth and resurrection. Don't screw it up. I love you guys. Bye.